Hey, top of the morning to you. I'm Michael, or as the grandkids call me, Rue. Hope you got a cup in your hand of something warm, good tea. Warm, I don't know. It's it's in the 60s here, but it was chilly in here this morning. Having Still having a cup of tea. I drink a cup of tea. Um, daylight, dark, uh, winter, spring, summer, fall. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? Winter, spring, summer, fall. All you got to do is drink some tea. That's all. I think, uh, was that... Uh, James Taylor, yeah. Hey, welcome. I'm uh, Rue. Why I got cords hanging everywhere? It was two minutes before I was supposed to go live, and the internet just goes. <laughs> and so I'm scrambling, throwing things across the room. I throw things anyway. I throw things when I'm. Ha- I don't throw things when I'm mad. My, I come from a family of throwers. We threw rocks. We threw baseballs. Uh, my son was a hammer thrower. I threw the shot and the, the shot put in the discus in high school, and my son was a hammer thrower, discus shot putter in college. Um, my boys throw frisbees, play frisbee golf. We we throw we throw things. I throw a fishing line into the water every now and then. It's been a long time though. I did a little fly fishing back in what was it November? I was up in Virginia on the river, and I fished for about ten minutes and sat down and painted. Yeah. So there you go. Hey, uh, welcome to uh, Rude Noodles Live. Um, I do this Mondays, Tuesdays. Teach class on Wednesdays. This Wednesday, I'll finish the March class. Even though it's in April, I took a hiatus day. Had to go to the mountains last week. Came to you last Monday morning from my old home place. Uh, Wasn't my old home place, but it's a place that I lived in an old home there. Anyway, glad to have you on the show this morning. Thank you for being here. Uh, I put out a little piece this morning. Some of you responded. Carol Marcy, your response was fantastic and so close. I'm going to look back to see if anything was closer. I created a new word. Let me see if you can see it here on my desk this morning. Let me just go to the desk shot. There it is right there. Do you see it right here? I'm going to circle it with this uh, Lamy pen. I said I created a word, but I think it's pronounced um, um, Gialwan. Uh, like Gowan, Gowan, Gowa, Gowa, Gowa. It sounds like an old Tarzan word. And I know Tarzan is probably not politically correct, but it was a show that I grew up on when I was a kid. And I learned adventure from it. And I learned how to do the Johnny Weissmuller yell. I've actually been in uh, Uganda where that first one was filmed. We actually traced the fascinating, fascinating story. Anyway, oh, you know, he did all that. Uh, uh, this word is Gaona. Uh, Gaonia, like Gawa, Gawa. Uh, so I'm going to tell you what it means in a minute, but I, I just made it up. It's an acronym, really, and it just came to me this morning about confidence in artists. And Carol said, uh, Carol Marcy, you're the last one I saw before my internet crashed and I had to boot everything up. It was get your, you said, get your art on and watercolor. And, uh, And man, that was really close, so close that uh, it's worth a painting that I already promised you about a year ago and haven't mailed yet. So that happens. Us artists, we don't know what we're doing sometimes. So let me turn this down. Let me say hello to a few of you here and thank you for being on the show. Here, I got two pair of glasses on. I'm going to wear these this morning. Here, I'll put those glasses on. Um, I had to, I lost a pair of my clear readers. These are blue light readers. You know what that is? You know, not, not, you got them at Walmart. These are blue light readers. So if you read the computer a lot, they, uh, they it'll take it a little easier on your eye. I've got a spot on my eye that's bothering me right here. And so, um, let's see. So top of the morning, Annette Henson, first on the show, Yahoo for Rue and Bob, Bob from, uh, the atmospheric cornfields of Iowa, the atmospheric cornfields of Iowa. Close encounters of the third kind up there, you know. I love it. Iowa has been, uh, you know, I mean, you're a great company, Kevin. Uh, excuse me, uh, not not Kevin. Yeah, who, who played in that movie? I, I I know the guy. I worked with him. Um, golly, that's sad, isn't it? Is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. Is this Iowa? No, it's heaven. Is this heaven? No, it's Iowa. Kathy Monroe, thank you for being here. Um, I need some ginkgo, I think, this morning. Let me have another sip of tea. Mm. There we go. All right. Kevin Cosner is who I was trying to think of, um, who did the movie up there. Kathy Moore, hello. Pat Lightbody. I love it, love it, love it. Karen Bender, thanks for being on the show. Jennifer Yens, thank you for being here. Mickey Hupp. Um, Ashwini from India. Always love to have you on the show. Linda Linhart, June Jones. 
uh, June. You got a crazy wit, sense of humor. Jennifer Martin, thank you for saying hello from Florida. I was in and out of there like a wild man and just had a crazy time. But I um, appreciate you staying in touch. Uh, Heather Kuman, thank you. Jimmy Jansen, Pat Brooks, thanks for being on the show and the cast of thousands. Some days it is. You know, people have gotten back to busy. COVID's dropping away and folks are drifting away a little bit. Those of you who have been bitten by the art bug, and as one of the rules, which the book, one of these days, Pat's done her work on the book, Noodle Doodle Fiddle Piddle. I am doing some rewrites, and it's just, it's it's no fun to keep saying I'm rewriting, I'm rewriting. But let me tell you something about writing a book, if you ever get into writing a book. It's not writing a book that's hard. It's rewriting the book that's hard, and then rewriting the rewrite that's hard, and then rewriting the rewrite that's the rewrite that's really rewriting hard. And so... Why? Because, well, you don't want to put a lot of filibuster out there like I do this live show. I get away with it because you see me talking and using my hands. But in reading, you got to go, what the heck is he talking about? So I'm trying to condense down these stories so they fit on the back of the page. Okay. (laughs) So blessings for your gratefulness. Hopefully you'll thank me later when you read it and go, oh, this is why he says that. Okay. So, Pat, thank you. I'm, uh, sometimes I just broadcast my notes because if I sit down and take it, and I've, I've been really busy and I love being busy, but I'm just about to uh, be busy, too busy. Um, Kim Sheets, glad you're off today. Thank you for not cheating and watching me at work, but that is kind of fun. Appreciate that. Uh, Deborah Rideout, glad you're here. Pauline Bold, Diane Soho, Jason Nichols, ha, spring break in New Jersey. There you go. Um, love it very much. Trish Brown, glad you're on the show. Sandy Rongish. Is it Rongish? Rongish. Rongish. With an R, not a W. You wouldn't want to be Sandy Rongish. Uh, Randall Taylor Craven. Phil, Phil, thanks for being on the show from sunny Northwest Ohio. That's somewhere up there. I've been in Ohio lots of times. Gracie, thanks for being on the show. Chris Whitaker, Rosie BG, Donna Bullman. Donna, thank you for the sweet card. That was all handmade and the poem and the stitching and everything. Really cool. Crayola loved it too. So thank you for that little celebration. You have a great way with uh, um, sketching and art and whimsicalness and also just your collectiveness into the Rube goldberg thing. I like it very much. Uh, Barbara Mayer, Crystal McCanny, uh, Jean Ansoller, Kathy Taylor. Wow, look at all you people here. Margie Duvall, thanks for being on the show. Audrey Ginter, uh, Ruth Ann Gody. So many names that I say over and over. Michael Ashburn, thanks for being on the show, buddy. Uh, I was just, once again, uh, another week has gone by, and I've showed someone the picture of the fish. And Ash, I'm sorry I haven't pasted it over to my computer yet, but I will. I'll try to do that tomorrow. Uh, Ash Fish. Give myself another note down there on the desk. I did it right here. See, right here. I wrote down Ash Fish. You can't hardly see it, can you? Here, I'll pull my camera over. There it is right there. Ash Fish. Whoosht. Okay. Don't you I love just moving the camera? Pay no attention to the man behind the camera. <laughs> ah, it's Monday morning. Gawa. G-Y-A-O-A-W. It's about confidence for an artist. So, uh, Linda, thanks for being on the show. Uh, Terry Tardy, good morning. I uh, hope you had a great Easter. Woohoo! We did. Thank you so much. Sally Ann Smith, Jan Campbell, Deborah Spangler, um, Cows Throw Milk. <laughs> uh, you ain't right. You ain't right. Uh... Donna, Audrey, Betsy, thank you for being on the show. Uh, Soblowski, um, Stephanie Shepard, Brenda Dow. All right, so here we go. Let me uh, let me paint a little bit. Let me answer some questions here that I have to do this morning. Let me let me just jump on this uh, right here. All right, you see what's on the desk this morning? A mess. And also, there's some paper here. This is uh, this is uh, Fabriano. Hot press, 140 pound Fabriano hot press. I'm going to show you what I've been doing with it. It was a nine by 12 sheet and I just chopped it. I didn't measure it. Didn't really care if it was the right 
size or not. It's just the size that I just cut out and wander around with. And I've been on a bird painting kick. And so I want to tell you why. So here's the thing. People, I get notes and people say, um, well, do you ever paint acrylic? And, um, and do you paint oils? And do you paint houses? <laughs> no, they don't ask me that. Uh, I had to when I was a kid growing, working up with my dad who was a builder, but I don't anymore. And Carol doesn't want me to paint in the house because she, like my dad, doesn't like it when I leave holidays in the wall. And I do. Um, but people say, why watercolor? And so that's, that's a good question. So why do I paint watercolor? And, and I've come up with several reasons. And so you think about these for your own painting. When people say, oh, watercolor is so unpredictable. Yes, that's one of the reasons that I love painting with it. It's unpredictable. And they say water watercolor painting is um, is um, awkward. Yes, and that's one of the reasons that I like it. And and I, I wrote I actually wrote down a note here. I want to make sure I'm getting my note here. I said it's uh, it dries quickly. It dries quickly, and I love it for that purpose because I like to paint something and then be on. I painted two little paintings when I first sat down here this morning because everything was working before it crashed, and I've had to throw them aside. But they're already dry. And so I love the fact that watercolor, well, almost dry. I wouldn't mail them out yet, but I let them lay for a day or two just to sort of make sure it's uh, everything's in the in the paper. But really, I could touch it, put my hand on it. It's not uh, smearing it or anything. So I like it because it dries fast. I like it because it's, uh, I said, unpredictable. Uh, it just runs. It drips. It splatters. I love that. I love the fact that it's loose. I love the fact that it surprises me. And so those are some of the th reasons why I paint watercolor. I just love the quickness and the boldness of it. I like the I like the fact that you can take a blue and you can put it down really bold. You can add a little water and it's less bold. And you go, well, duh. And then a little less water and a dry brush, it's even less bold. So even with that one color, I don't have to change colors. That's why a little pan of watercolors like I carry here, like this, uh, with that, I can just create every color in the rainbow, okay? As Harry Chapin used to say, there's so many colors in the rainbow, so many colors in the morning sun, so many colors in the flower, and I see everyone. See, I respond in songs. That's how my brain is wired. Uh, so why do I paint watercolors? So that's it. It's, uh, it's quick. It surprises me. It uh, dries quickly. It's loose. It's unpredictable. Those are all the things that make it exciting for me. So there's the medium. If you don't like those things, if you like oil that you have to put on some paint and then with an oil brush, and then you go make coffee, clean the house, drive to town, maybe take a vacation, come back, and then put on the next coat, <laughs> then that's oil painting. And I, I love it. People do that. People who say, uh, I've got a meeting at 10. Okay, I'll paint for five minutes, and then I'll go to my meeting, and I'll come back, and I'll change that canvas. So it's okay. It's a style. I like this style. Uh, why do I paint roosters? I get that question a lot. One, and I answer this all the time, but I'm answering it again because my name means rooster, not Michael, but the Han does. Uh, I like them because they're storytellers, they're uh, they're balladeers, they're uh, uh, they're boastful, they're poets, they're the farm bard. Uh, which is one of my domains that I own, farmbard.com. It's not up and running, but it's there. <clears throat> I love roosters because they're <clears throat> they're arrogant, and yet they generally get what's coming to them. I like them because they're colorful. Uh, I like them because they're unpredictable. They run. They surprise people. Oh, wow. It's the same reason I like watercolor. You see what's happening here? Yes, it's all going together. Why do you put... I have people ask me this all the time. Let me just stop the music and get serious here. You need to know these things because people are going to ask you these things about your art. It all pertains to this right here. Gow. Okay. Why do you put captions on your art? Do you think people won't get it? No, I think they'll get it. But I want them to get a certain direction or a certain misdirection, both of those. Why do you put so much humor in your art um, and you use captions to bring the humor? Why? So people ask me these questions. And so 
Um, I answer them sometimes, and sometimes I'll just give them a humorous answer, but because the captions are quick to respond, they're usually humorous, they're usually unpredictable, I don't paint paintings and use other people's captions. I just don't. It's not because I'm such a puritist on copyright, but I, I am a little bit because if you've ever done a record album or written a song or a poem or a magazine article, and then somebody comes along and writes the same thing after they've read yours, you kind of go, well, wait a minute, where, where's your originality? You know, um, and there's laws against stealing certain things and taking things. And you always borrow from everyone, but you can't really take my caption and say it's your caption, or you really can't take my song and put it on the radio without my permission. And I kind of like that. I don't want to take anybody else's song. Oh, uh, there was this old hymn. I just took it and made it my song. I can record it, but I have to get permission or I have to pay the artist. That's a whole nother story. Um, I like the captions because they're unpredictable. So I like that turn. Like I don't take, um, I don't take a, a poem that I read somewhere and turn that into a piece of art. There's nothing wrong with that. But if I quote that artist exactly, I have to give that artist permission. And in this case, I just make it my art. It's just something that I do. It's like when I teach storytelling. And some of you who know that I'm, th I'm working on a storytelling course, it's like you can tell anybody's story in the world. You can, you can just tell it. I heard it. I want to tell it. But you can't tell it like it's your story if it really didn't happen to you. You have to say, this happened to a friend of mine. Or my friend wrote this story about the time he and his son went here. And, and, and so you have to be careful with that a little bit. Or if you don't, even from the law standpoint, you, use your, you lose your accountability. So people go, well, that wasn't his story. How did he tell it was his story when it wasn't his story? And so that's some of my storytelling. So why do I do captions and humor? Uh, because I want people to respond and catch a smile. What does humor do? In the words of Jerry Clower, who the late great humorist from the South who told some funny stories. I met him twice one time and I told him, I quoted him at a banquet. And uh, he said, son, what did you? And I put this in the book, by the way. Uh, noodle, noodle, fiddle, piddle. The story's in the book. And I say, Jerry, I quoted you last night. I was speaking up in Lexington, Kentucky. And I said, you said this. And he said, son, sit down. What did you say that, what did you say that I said that I should have said if I had been there? And I'm going like, what, what are you saying? That's just how he used the language. And I said, he I said, you said, Jerry, that humor opens the heart so that love can sneak in. And he said, son, I said that, and I said it just like that. And I am proud that you quoted me so correctly. And we just shared a cup of coffee, and then we both had to catch planes and go in different directions. And it's, it's, it changed my life a little bit. I just like the fact that I was able to share his quote, but I said, Jerry Clower once said, and now I can say, my friend, my quick acquaintance, Jerry Clower once said this about humor. So humor does that. So that's why I use humor. Humor opens the heart a little bit. It gives people to smile. Okay. Uh, why do you, um, why do you use the tools that you use? Um, wow. They change a lot. This is another question that I get. Why do you use these tools? And I go, well, um, I found out something last week. I told you I was talking to Yasutoma, the people who make these brushes. Here's a Yasutoma brush right here. Sorry. I'm not on the desk. Let me, let me switch this to picture in picture. There's the Yasutoma brush right there, okay? Um, it's a calligraphy brush. It's a bamboo brush. Uh, here's different sizes, as you can see right there. They are. I took this brush, and I took my pocket knife uh, about three weeks ago in my class with some of you, and I whittled it into a pen, and I just think about how a fountain pen is made. See this fountain pen right here? You see the end of that fountain pen? It's got kind of a curve on it. Well, look what I did to the stick the end of this brush. I just, I did it because I went out in the yard and I got a stick and I whittled the stick that way a little bit. There's the stick. And then I thought, wait a minute, this is a piece of bamboo. This would cut really well. So I just took my knife and I whittled it down a little bit like this. There I am whittling on it right there. I keep this knife on the, keep it in my pocket, but 
And so I made a, a, a pin out of it, and then I turned it around, and I paint with this end. I turn it around and sketch with this end, dip it in the inkwell. Well, I was talking to uh, the people at uh, Yasutoma, and um, Phoebe said, you know, we make a pin like that or a brush like that. And I go, you got to be kidding me. I thought I was being original, <laughs> which is like nothing new under the sun, right, King Solomon? And so uh, they're sending me one to give it a try, but it has a bamboo point on one end and it has a brush on the other end. But uh, <clears throat> I thought I was being just so, but sometimes my tools are just what I need. Do I change pens? Sometimes. I like the way the pen bleeds. I like the way the pen doesn't bleed. I like the way the pen uh, adds uh, flair to the line. No pun intended for those flare pens I use. So uh, it's unpredictable. It uh, surprises me. It wanders and wanders around. It breaks the rules. It makes statements. It uh, decorates. Uh, and there's nothing more fun than seeing your painting on a wall. If you want to know what builds confidence, here's what it is right here. If you want to know what builds confidence, I, I've been to three houses in the last few weeks, and I was making a cup of coffee in someone's kitchen. I was helping myself. It was late in the day and I didn't want tea. I wanted, I needed a shot of caffeine. And I looked up in the window and there were three of my little paintings sitting there, just tiny little paintings and one on a wall. And it, it wasn't a, a bad pride, I don't think, but it was a fun, warm feeling that came over me that gave me confidence as an artist. So here's my statement right here. You want to have confidence as an artist? then paint the same painting 50 times until you love it and give it to somebody and let them put it on their wall or sneak into their house one night while they're sleeping. You know, I'm kidding. And then just put a painting on their wall. Just take a little painting like this. Well, hummingbirds I did this morning. I'm going to, I'm going to paint this for you in just a second again. So you can see how it, how it paints really quickly. So this little hummingbird and there's a little hummingbird. And he says, I can't remember the words. And this one says, fine, just hum. Okay, so when I see this in a little frame on someone's wall and it makes them smile when they walk by or they find themselves going, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you say, what's the words? You go, I don't know, I'm just humming. That makes me smile. But when I see that, it gives me confidence because I know I created that. I'd never seen that caption before. I'd never seen two hummingbirds really talking to each other before. That's the imagination of a painter. So what do I get? I get this. Get your art on a wall. Ta-da! My friend Chip is watching this morning. I hope you are. Chip painted, my, my coffee friend Chip painted a ballerina about two months ago, just with black ink. Sound effects. I should have put them in the video. And a friend of his saw it online and said, Chip, I want that painting. And he goes, come on, I'll send it to you. He takes it to her. She's got it on her wall. And let me tell you what that does for my friend Chip without even me calling him and asking him today. The confidence of getting your art on a wall. Get your art on a wall. Yo, get your art on a wall. And what that does, when Pat Brooks hangs a painting on a wall or in a gallery or contest, or when one of you send a piece of art out to someone, or when Chris Whitaker sends one of her paintings somewhere, or Julie Walden does, or Sarah, I, I can name people after people. I've seen it happen. Denise sends one of her dogs out, and people put it on the wall. You have a little bit of confidence. I'm not talking about prideful confidence. I'm talking about, I think I can do this. That helps you zip it up a notch. You just click up a, a ladder just a little bit, not to be better than any other artist, but to say, my style is finding me and I'm finding my voice and I'm actually putting out a piece of art that someone would love to have. How fun is that? Get your art on a wall. Yo, okay, or however you say it. It's an acronym, I know, but I think I want to make it into a t-shirt. Get your art on the wall. Hey. People talk about, I think someday I'll paint. I think someday I'll paint. I think someday I'll paint. No, just sit down and start painting. And then paint it 50 times till you get it on the wall. Okay, I had that on my chest today and I had to bring it out because if you do, 
It will surprise you. It'll uh, break some rules for you to not have everything polished up. I stood on my back porch yesterday and talked to my daughter and the next door neighbor about polishing things. Sometimes you polish and you polish and you polish and you polish. And you go, if I get this polished a little more, I'm going to put it out there. If I, if I paint this a little more, no, just put it out there and say, I want you to have this like it is. It's just real and it works. Put this on the wall. Okay. All right. Whew. Okay. Set all that right there. <laughs> you guys are piling on here and I'm not paying attention. I'll buy that t-shirt. Melinda McLaughlin says, good. Love seeing my art on somebody's wall. Chris Whitaker says, uh, Gene Mallet says, I actually sold three paintings the other day and I'm re and all while I'm recovering from a car accident. Look at you, Aaron Gahan Gouda. Hey, hey, like that. We were talking about this yesterday, my dear. Just get it out there. My daughter is great at just getting art out there. She will paint something and just go, whoa, I need, I, somebody needs this. And somebody will say, and she has her art on the wall. Um, uh, the greatest perfection is imperfection, Jason Nichols says. Um, see, everyone who has ever sent me or given me or if I purchased a piece of art is hanging on the wall in her house. Carol and I have original art from people that we know hanging in our house. The cards and notes and letters and art that I've been sent are all right over there in a basket ready to go on a board on that wall. So when I walk in, I go, these are the Ruse crew. These are people who do this. I, I don't need you to send it. I'm not begging for it. I'm just saying over the, over the year, people have sent me a few things. So now you're really seeing that what's happening is, um, uh, and I love this, Janet, that you're, you're uh, some, some of your painting kindness rocks. Love the hummingbirds. Um, the point is what happens is um, when your art gets on a wall, it makes a difference to them because they like it and they catch your idea and your humor, your originality, and it brightens their house. What it does to you, you don't even see it. I forgot it was in my friend's house and I was making coffee and I went, oh, wow. And I looked at the date. You know what it said? 2015. I just started painting. All right. Hey, I'm going to paint something. I'm sorry I've been talking so long, but I wanted you to hear that a little bit. I, and I'm just going to start right here with this. Why am I painting birds? Well, I got all wound up painting birds the other day when I was running around at uh, wherever I was running around. Where was I running around? Um, somewhere in Asheville. I went to the garden shop and I saw Libby there and Libby is trying to find me some more con little concrete birds. By the way, the birds are uh, start getting your bird ready to make it fly. If you're owner of one of the little concrete rue birds, get them out here and let them go. Pick a, pick a winner. Send them a note. Say, send me an email. I'll send you a, uh, I'll send you the bird and make sure you paint them some a little original bird. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going down the trail. I'm going down the trail. Um, birds like roosters are, uh, they're, they're colorful. And I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to, I'm going to paint, uh, I think I'm going to paint 20 birds for sure. Um, and I'll tell you about those birds in a minute. I made a list. I actually made a list. Birds. Why am I painting? I, most of them are going to be songbirds because, um, uh, I think birds, uh, I like to hear birds sing. So here we go. Watch this. I'm going to paint this little painting for you again right here and just show you how quick this painting can come to life. <clears throat> I apologize <clears throat> for my throat this morning. And then I promised you, I'd paint you a, uh, a painting with this. This is my stick brush. It's actually a uh, bamboo brush. That's about a uh, CC one, I think, a Yasutomo calligraphy brush. I just whittled a pinpoint on the back. I'm not going to do this one. I'm going to do this with this. So here we go. This is. I'm looking at this one now. I just sat down here this morning early, about six thirty, and was uh, having a cup of tea and fiddling around with life. This is a piece of uh, Fabriano hot press. This is the paper that my daughter loves painting with uh painting on um uh, just because her her flowers just go flying on this and and uh, so here we go so i'm going to do this little beak of the hummingbird i'm just going to roll it out like this it has a little bit of a bend to it and then i'm just going to take his little teardrop shaped head sort of like so and then come in with his body like this and then i'm just going to throw these wings out like this and just let them come down here 
And you see how fast that is? There he is right there. I just did it. And then I'll come back in here with this little one, do the same shape. Can't even hardly see. I'm, I'm almost sketching with this pen like I would sketch with a very sharp pencil. And so I'm just going to put this little bird right here. And his little wing is just out a little bit. And he's sitting on a branch. All right. So now you really can't see that, but watch what happens when I lay a little bit of water in here. And I'm going to use a, uh, what's this, a number six. That's a pretty big brush for this. But um, if I had a four, oh, there's a four right there. Nah, I'm going to stay with the six. Just a bigger brush. Here we go. So I'm going to come in. Uh, what I might do is put the eye in here first. Just a little bit of a round eye right here. And my, I might come in and just make this a touch darker, just so you can see that come in like that. Um, nose has been a little bit. Yours would be too if you flew around trying to hit swinging objects. I'm just going to use a little water here uh, on this paper. I think you, you can, really can't see where I'm putting it there, but watch here in just a second. You'll see what's happening. I'm going to go get a touch of green because I want a little bit of green on his head right there. I want some darker green. Go ahead and put that in there like that. If I really want some darker green, watch what I can do. I can put this uh, fountain pen right in here and just pick up some of that. Put a little bit right here. Maybe here. There's his feet. A little bit here. All right, so then uh, we're going to make him a ruby-throated uh, hummingbird. So I'm going to give him a little bit of red right in here on his throat, just like this, and just let that run into it. I'm going to let those colors merge together. I want a little bit of purple in there, too. I want a little bit of, uh, let's see, what I've got. I've got a little bit of blue going in here. See that? So I got a little bit of blue on his head up here too. I don't know why I just made him a little more blue or green. Doesn't really matter. Um, you know, you're, you're out there going like, ah, I don't think I like that hummingbird as much. He's got a little too much red for me. You go like, really? It's a hummingbird. And by the way, we saw our first one yesterday while the family's having a little bit of um, lunch. Out, well, no, change that. We had a lot of lunch <laughs> out by the picnic table or um, out on the picnic table. Hummingbird just arrived and said, hey, 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 must be spring. I'm here. So there you go. So there's a little, uh, now watch. Uh, there's not a whole lot of detail there. I'm going to take this and go in here, do the same little red. Probably need a smaller brush for this, but I'm going to stay at it. Let's come in here and touch that with a little blue. Too much. So I'm going to go in with a dry brush and pick some of this up. See that? This is what I love about watercolor. Remember what I told you? It's unpredictable. But it's also, if my color is too dark, I can just dry out the brush and use the brush as a little bit of a, a sponge to take up some of that paint. And I like all the green in hummingbirds. There's something about it. There's not a lot of green birds out there, unless you get into the, um, unless you get into parrots, you know, and, uh, Parrots are cartoon birds, as far as I'm concerned. They make, they make me laugh. All right, so. Um, and so I can take my uh, pen here. Let's see, where's my, where's my, here it is. Uh, I told you I throw things. So I'm going to come back in here now with a little bit of detail and just cut some of this black in here. What I'm using is my fountain pen. Um, and so I'm just sort of playing with this concept of this hummingbird flying. I'll put some detail in. And I'm going to show you something that I'm going to use here just a little bit. And am I good at this yet? Heck no. I'm just getting ready to do birds. I'm going to start doing a bird a day for the next 50 days. I'm just going to do a bird a day. Because why? Well, because I haven't done many of them. I've done lots, thousands of roosters. They're birds. But I'm going to do songbirds. I'm going to do, here's, here's my list. I made a list this morning while I was sitting down here. I'm probably not going to do the owls in my backyard. Ash is on the show this morning, and it was Ash who taught me what the owls says. We have bar, we don't have we don't have barn owls. We have barred owls. B a r r e d barred owl. And there's four of them here, and they talk back and forth, and they sound like primates at the zoo sometimes. But they they say this. Ash would do it for us. Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? That's what they say. Ooh, 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 ooh. And so my my grandkids know that really well, but I'm not going to paint the owl. They're striped and they're they're hard to paint. It's like painting oil paint just takes me too long to paint an owl. I want something that's really loose and humorous and takes off and unpredictable. So I'm going to paint a wren because they are all those things above the finch. I'm going to paint the house finch, the goldfinch, the house sparrow, the uh, the there's another house I'm going to do uh, house finch, 
a house sparrow, a house wren. I'm going to paint a hummingbird. I'm going to paint a cardinal, a chickadee, the tufted titmouse, the oriole. I'll probably do one oriole because I just think we should. I'm going to do a crow, not because they're colorful, but they're humorous. Crows are storytellers. And I'm going to do a robin. I'm going to do a nuthatch. I mean, why would a crazy rooster painter not do a nuthatch? I'm going to do a blue jay because I think they're just cantankerous. I'm going to do the mockingbird because, well, because, well, because, well, because, well, because. And I'm going to do a junco, which I don't know a lot about juncos, but we have them here. So uh, that's about 15, 20 birds. Maybe not 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. How about that? That's 15 birds I'm going to paint. And I think I'm going to paint all those several times each. And then I'm going to have some fun doing it. And why? Because I need to get better at painting the birds and things that bring joy to my life. I just painted a cardinal um, yesterday morning um, while I was sitting outside. Let's see if I have him in here. And uh, I might have him in this book. Let's see if I do. Uh, these are little drawing papers that I'm just sketching on. There's my uh, circus bird. He's a wren. Wren, you ran away to join the circus. Here, here's a cardinal right here that says, um, uh, we need some seed out here. I think there's a, a real funny thing about the bird looking in and sort of, you know, the I always say, and this is no reflection on my Catholic followers, the, the cardinal really does want to be the Pope. <laughs> He's like, I'm in charge, okay? This is my yard. Pretty, pretty boy, pretty boy, pretty boy. That's what he whistles. Um, here's my hummingbird thing, the first one I did. Here's one I did. Look at this. See, I've already done this three or four times. See? And so I'm getting there. What are the words of that song you're humming? Really? And then I painted another red bird somewhere. I don't know where he is. Maybe he's in here. So why do I do this? Because I want to get better at my craft. I take myself serious when I say 827. This is a bird here that you don't see very often. He's a bird that hops around the backyard. Um, here's a bird that was just sketched with pen, and I'm going to do one of those for you in a second. There's a dandelion. Here's a beet. Um, beats all here's a carrot can you carry it over here here's uh here's another beat what's for lunch beats me <laughs> why do i put captions on there because i want people to get my art i love doing that all right so what's happening with these two take a look see how fun this is you need to just have fun with your art look how much time i'm taking to make these leaves on this tr branch Whoo! that took forever so some of you think, if you just said, why does he paint so fast? Not because I'm trying to be cool or or classy or look how fast he is. I'm, I do it because it just helps me remain loose. And in the process, what happens is I'll just throw some splatter around on the page. And if there's too much, I'll go in and I'll get some of it out with the paper towel. And I'll just leave it like that. And I'll splatter some green around there. I'll pick a little of this up and I'll just splatter it. And I might splatter it like this. Look at that. Okay. And I might splatter it this way. And I might splatter it. Those of you who are saying that, oh, yeah, you can splatter with a toothbrush. Well, I, I do not like brushing my teeth after I've been splattering paint with it. Guess I could get a new one. So there's, there's, a, there's that hummingbird I just painted. Now, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to come in when it dries a little bit. And I'm going to add a little more purple right here. And I'm going to add it when it dries a little bit. See, I just did that. Terry Tardy says, I do this all the time. She says, he tells us what he's going to do in a little bit. And then he does it right then. My little bits are short. Okay. So here's what I thought I'd do in the next few weeks. Just uh, not, not on the class so much, but I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm going to still talk watercolor and stories and painting, but I'm going to paint some more roosters. Um, and I'm going to paint some birds just because I really want to learn how to paint birds better. And I'm going to put a little more rich green in this tail, just like this, and maybe splatter some of that in there. Just grab whatever's handy at the time. And, uh, and so there's a little hummingbird painting. So I'll let it dry and I'll sign it and I'll do something with it. Okay. Let me show you what happens with this, uh, pen right here. All right. That's a bird. See how fast that took about eight and a half minutes. And that's while I'm talking the whole time. Um, what I'm getting at is this. You want to see your art change? You want to see uh, some confidence? Get your art on a wall, okay? How fun is that when you do it? So you might have to give away a few. I love this paper because it's just, it's not too expensive. Uh, just chop it up in little pieces. And here we go. 
I'm actually going to paint this on, on oh, this is a piece of drawing paper, 80 pound. Okay. Just 80 pound, little cheap drawing paper that uh, cheap Joe sends me. Uh, thank you, cheap Joe's. I appreciate you guys. Uh, I love talking with them. I like talking to people who own art stores uh, and what they're doing and what they're selling and what people are buying. It's fun for me. I just, and then I love it when, uh, when they call and say, Hey, we appreciate uh, people who are ordering the Rude Doodle stuff. And I go, no, I appreciate that. You know, you guys have helped me out for years. These are American Journey paints. They're from Cheap Joe's. And, uh, and my paper that I had laid out here this morning is a Joe Miller paper. This is Kilimanjaro. Uh, this is, this actually, this brush would actually work really well on this paper too. I'll just do it on both. All right, so here's my homemade brush. Ready? Here we go. I'm taking some uh, Higgins Black Magic Waterproof Ink, taking the top off very carefully. This is where it gets messy if you wear a white shirt. I'm just going to dip this down into the uh, dip pen right here, and this is it. Made this this morning. As a matter of fact, I'm going to just carve a little bit more right here. Hoping that I'm going to get some run into here. <laughs> and I actually took my knife and made a little bit of a groove right in here. Hoping that that ink will just fly right down to that little groove to the point of my pen. This is a pretty sharp point. I didn't flatten it out too much. So here we go. Careful when you're moving things around. You don't knock your ink over. This one I actually put in a little canvas so it's pretty stable. This one I'm going to keep messing around and knock it over. Here we go. No pencil sketch, just this. Um, guys are talking about birds. What a hoot. I get it. Is that a pun? What a, paint a bird? Um, I love painting eagles. I don't paint eagles. Uh, that would take me too long. Um, I paint little bitty birds. Okay, here we go. Here it is. I'm going to dip my brush in here. Look at that. Got some ink on the end of it. And here goes my roux right here. What's pretty fun about this is is that you get this very dark line at first and then as the ink starts to leave the paper you get this uh, you get this scrappy little line that looks like it skipped some on you. Writing with a stick will do that. It's not smooth. It's real scratchy. You can probably hear it. Hey, listen to this. Here. Here, I'll put my microphone down here. Listen to this. Listen, to, listen to me paint this thing right here. Paint this other leg right here. Hear that? How cool is that, huh? And you're dripping ink all over the place. How crazy is that? Okay, so wash out my stick, which is really a uh, Yasutoma paintbrush, and I just whittled on the end. And there it is. That worked pretty doggone well. But let's see what happens when we add a little watercolor to it. I'm going to go in here with a little red and just come in here and just touch this. Now, what's happening is when I touch those lines, I'm going to get some of that. Uh, you know what I didn't do? Look at that. Just got carried away and didn't paint his waddle, did I? No, I have to go in here and paint the waddle a little bit. Just pick it up right here. Pick one up right there. All right. Put a little detail in this uh, back tail feather right here. Let me go in there with just a little bit. Of... Now, I do know this about this ink. Okay, this ink will dry uh, fairly rapidly, but uh, it'll take a while. And it dry. I'm going to show you on the other piece of paper, too. I thought that'd be fun to do this morning. Um, part of art is just experimenting. So if I go in here and I'm being very careful, now I'm going to show you where I'm not being careful. If I pick up the edge of that line, what happens is that ink rolls into my red and gives me a darker red, almost a deep scarlet. You see it happen there? There's a change in that art. Look how red, look how bright red this is, but look what happens when I got down here into where the ink was uh, thick. All right. And then I'm just going to take some water on this brush. Let me get my uh, bamboo, other bamboo brush here. Let me get this. This is a SW1 Yasutoma brush. Here we go. I'm going to just come in here and start picking up some of this ink. And look what's happening. Just with a little bit of water. See the different tones that you're getting? And this is what I love about uh, 
a dip pen like this. You just got all this extra tone and color to play with. Really makes it kind of fun. I had a friend send me a note. Uh, I had a, a person, he wasn't a friend, I didn't really know him, just via the web, but he followed the show for about, uh, he followed my page for several years, and uh, he was a humorous man. Uh, I followed him and uh, talked to him a couple times on email. He uh, had spent some time in Vietnam, um, and I had a friend who spent many years there as a flyer, and uh, two over two years and 1,300 missions. And so I was talking to him about Vietnam. And he one day he sent me a note and he said, finally, finally, you've painted a rooster that everybody understands. He's he's like the ones we raised when I was a kid. Had a big white uh, 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 front and up by his uh, waddle. And then the rest of him was dark and black, and I, that's the chickens I grew up with. All these red and blue and green, I've never seen roosters like that. And I go, dude, you're in Vietnam. You should see roosters running around everywhere, all colors. And he goes, no, nope, roosters are black and white. That's the only way roosters are. And so I'm going like, that made me laugh because uh, the reason I started singing that song this morning, uh, Harry Chapin's song, Flowers Are Red, my son reminded me the other day, he said, I'm sure you've used this on your show, but you know, it's about the little boy who goes to school and, uh, He's painting all these bright color flowers. I mean, they're just, just colors are everywhere. His page is just exploding. And the teacher comes over and she says, what are you doing, young man? Flowers are red and green leaves are green. And there's no other way that flowers should be seen. But the little boy said, there's so many colors in the rainbow, so many colors in the morning sun, so many colors in the flower, and I see every one. But the teacher said, no. Flowers are red, young man. Green leaves are green. La, 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 la. There's no other way the flower should be seen. And so she puts him in a corner uh, for painting flowers that way. And she every day he does it. He says, there's so many colors. And she says, no, flowers are red. It goes on and on and on. And finally, his parents uh, take a new job. And they leave the city. And they move to another place. And uh, the little boy goes uh, into another school. And this teacher comes in and she's kind of cool. She says, today we're going to paint flowers. And all the kids are just throwing paint everywhere. And the little boy paints this flower that's red. And then there's green leaves that are green. And the teacher comes over and she says, but you painted all your flowers red and green. He goes, yes, flowers are red and green leaves are green. She says, but there's so many colors in the rainbow. And so, you know what? When somebody tells you that all flowers are just red and green, you got to say, no, 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 no. So, uh, Ralph and I would have a little argument online and he'd say, all chickens are just black and white. And I'm going like, no, they're not. Zebras are black and white and some of them are brown and white. And some have a little tinge of purple in them. So don't tell me that. Okay, so I'm going to uh, go in here with my brush again, get a little bit of this green and just come in over the top of this black ink that I put in there like that. It's beginning to dry a little bit. Look how careful I'm putting this in. You know, I'm being facetious, right? I'm not being careful at all because who would want to do that? I might put a little brown in there just to catch a little dirt. And suddenly I have myself a nice little rooster. Ta-da! And I quit. This rooster is worth a, a comment and he's out of here. So there, boom, done. Let me change a piece of paper. Love this paper, by the way. This is Kilimanjaro, 140 pound, bright white. Take a look at this piece of paper. Let me get another piece here. Let me show you what this paper looks like. Um, this is what my daughter paints on all the time. <coughs> this is Kilimanjaro um, Studio Watercolor. It's not very expensive. Um, it is if you buy a big old honking thing, but they're hard to find. This is uh, 9 by 12. I drop it in half most of the time, but it's hot press. Uh, it's 140 pound. It's 25% cotton. So it's uh, it's pretty slick. Here's how I make it happen. Watch this. I just take it in this little paper cutter and I go, ah, that looks about halfway. Should I measure it? Are you kidding me? Why would I want to do that? Let's see how I did anyway. Just because, let's see how close it, the eyeball was. Oh my gosh. Missed it by a net tiny. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I am, and one one side of this is like slick as glass. The other side has a little bit of cotton touch to it. 
I'm going to grab some more of this. I'm going to do another rooster just on this paper to show you what happens. Lay this down very carefully. Come in here, dip my uh, uh, new pen I just made in here. Let's do this roux out here like this. Look at him. Okay. I'm just going to let his tail just go right off the page. Find myself painting to the music. Isn't that hilarious? Watch kids do that sometimes. You give them a paint and brush and colors and then uh, turn them loose. And uh, with, with a classical piece like this or, you know, even some other piece of music and they'll just go crazy. The brush will be following the music. You don't even realize you're hearing it. You do. Okay, so there's a quick sketch with just a stick. Um, now, why can't I just paint a rooster like that? Because I've painted 5,000 of them. So you can do that if you're doing dogs or horses or cats or flowers. You will have a go-to flower that you go to. You'll have a go-to dog that you go to. You'll have a mess all over your hands if you're not careful. All right, watch this. Now, this time I'm just going to paint with the bigger brush. I'm going to paint here. I'm going to paint with the other end of my uh, painting uh, pen. There we go. Hi, Vimy. Glad you found the show. Glad you showed up today. Even late, we'll take it. Uh, I like the noise. <laughs> must be a part of the yell. And by the way, Karen, those, uh, those colors in here is where you just let the water and the ink do what the water and the ink does. Sometimes we try too hard to make these graduated colors and all this. Just dry your brush out, come back in and try it again. Reach in and pick up a little. You can always go back and put in a darker tone. Don't start with your darkest tone because you got nowhere to go. Leave yourself room for change, okay? Um, wow, Janet, fascinating. You saw Harry Chapin twice before he died, man. That was July 1981, a sad day for me, it was. Um, missed it by Nets, honey. June Jones, you can use that. Just uh, tell people that you thought of it. I don't know where I heard of her. Um, your husband, Pat Brooks, you got to be kidding me. Drove Harry to the airport when he missed his tour bus. Oh, my gosh. Come on. Harry was my favorite of all times. Storyteller, fascinating. Okay, here we go. Um, just going to go in here now, and I'm using this brush. I'm going to move this palette over here so you can just see what I'm doing right here. Look at this right here. All right. Um, I'm, I'm dipping my brush in the red a little bit, and I'm dipping it back in the water, and then I'm just going in here, and I'm just uh, swinging some paint in like this. Want to know how to make a loose painting? This is how you do it right here. That ink has dried pretty doggone well on this paper. Amazing, huh? All right. Come in and get some of this black and just do this one like this right here. Watch this, watch this water just sort of uh, pile up here. It doesn't soak in too fast. And so you just have this water that's uh, got nowhere to go. Uh, the thing about cotton paper, 100% uh, rough paper, is that it soaks up the, the pigment. This lets it set on the surface a little bit. So I'm going to get some pretty funky, um, what I call merge lines or uh, mushroom or uh, uh, the blending here. And it's just going to kind of stick out a little bit. And I love what happens when it does that. Go in here and get a little bit of this orange and red that I always mix together for leg color. Drop some of that in here like this. Um, if I wanted a little of this black ink that with my stick that had wouldn't dry so fast, I could have uh, talked less and painted earlier. But I think you understand where I'm headed with this. So uh, sometimes when uh, I'd watch Charles Reed paint, I'd notice that he would just uh, sling his brush out sort of over his paint like this and, and, and give me those loose things. And I can also grab my other stick here and just give us some splatters to this like this, with a little bit of turquoise splatter around the page. And uh, maybe a little bit in the grass, a little bit of this green in there, uh, like so. And so I wind up with this rue that's uh, kind of off the page. 
which is perfectly fine with me. You know, I don't have to have every little piece on the page. And if you frame it, I, you know, it doesn't matter. So there's a quick little cartoon looking Rue who uh, was just done with a stick pen. And I turned the other end around and painted with that uh, Yasutoma brush. Look, by the way, you remember how wide that mop head was? Look at it now. It's turned into a, once I dip it in, drag it across the edge of my jar. Look at that brush. It's fantastic. Okay. All right. So I need to put these somewhere uh, before I have to go because they're just going to be all over the cotton picking place in a minute. And uh, let me do one more little uh, painting for you here this morning. And I'm going to do it on uh, on the same paper, okay? And I'll do that hummingbird again just so you can see a different design of him, okay? So here we go. Without looking, uh, there is one right here. This little one's right here, but I think I'm just going to do this one more laid out here. Let's see. He's going to be, no, I like him like this. He's going to have a straight, a little bit more of a straighter beak. So there's that teardrop head. And then there's his tummy coming down like this. And one wing going back there. There's another wing out here like this. And then he's got his little feet bowed up and under him. And then he's going to come down with some wrinkle in his tail. He's flying. Here's his eye right here. What I do with the eye, sometimes I'll just fill it in a little bit. And eyes are hard to do, people. Have you noticed? Um, but I'll fill in a little. and Just leave a little white spot in there. you got to have a little white in the eye. If you don't have a little bit of white in the eye, your animal, I don't care what you're painting, is going to look uh, kind of dead. Um, light is in the eye, people. Life is in the eye, okay? And so, um, big old brush again. Ready? All right, here we go. Just paint with some water first. That's why they call it watercolor. Get in there tight, get in here, just break all that up. Come in with a little bit of green on his head. He's got just a touch right here, green. Watch it run down, don't you love that? Um, went over that eye, so I'll come in there and touch it with my finger like this. Boop, paper towel. Come back in and come in here just a tad. And then I need a little bit of this uh, red into the, the gel right here. I don't want that to run up the wrong way, so I'm gonna tilt my paper up and let it run down this way. Look at what's happening right there. Let's get a little blue on his body here, coming down. A little blue strikes up here. Just, whoa, we think I got enough on it that time? I think so. I'm just going to, you know what? I might just leave that. I'll leave most of it. There we go. Um, come in with a little bit of turquoise in here. I've seen some turquoise and some hummingbirds. You know, they fly so fast, I don't know what I see in them most of the time. I just see uh, they're greedy little rascals. And, man, they are territorial, aren't they? They are fascinatingly territorial. Okay, so um, now I, this B, I'm still using a huge brush, if you haven't noticed. And um, the problem with, with uh, bamboo brushes, if you're not careful, you won't get them all the way cleaned out before you put them back in your palette. So be careful to check your palette. Make sure you didn't do what I just did. I dropped some blue from there into my yellow, and I had a green puddle. So I took a paper towel and cleaned out that green puddle down in there. Try to keep... You know, I could have done this differently since my daughter was on the show earlier. She paints from a mess like this. I call it a palette, or she calls it a palette. <laughs> I call it leftover lunch. <laughs> uh, um, but look, I can, I can just, uh, I can take this right here and just take a little water, spray it in here like this. Loosen this up just a little bit. This is a real mister bottle too. Misting bottle, mister. Uh, and and what I mean different than like squirt, 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 where you get this big splash of water. It's just really the 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 orifice is tiny and the power sprayer is strong. And so these little bottles just put out a, a misting. And so I love using that because you don't uh, you, you just barely soak it as it as it goes down. But this is kind of fun to paint out of this. So here, I'm going to go in here. Look, I've already got some color here that's pre-mixed that I'll just let the head of this bee become right here, just like that, and the body too. And uh, this is a, like I said, this is a big old brush. There's some French gray. Just sweep that in a little bit on the wings. Um, look at this brush all bent down that I'm painting with here. Maybe it needs a little bit of orange.
orange. There's a spot of orange right there, just on, right on his leg. All right. So what I have now is I have this uh, bee and this bird, and they're flying. Um, and so I'll come back in with a pen. Let me come back in with uh, let me come back in with the number seven pintail before I finish up today. Here it is, right here. A little pintail pen. I'm gonna come in. And I'm just going to finish out this, get a little bit of black around there. Just some uh, struts on his wings are tough. Put in some, uh, add a little bit of black from this pin right in here. Come down. I think I'm going to splatter this just a little bit more. I'm going to use this big brush again. Just going to go get a little bit of this green mix and hit it on there need something to tap it on there we'll just tap a little bit right there like that maybe pick up some yellow right here just tap that in there oh look at that that looks pretty cool um maybe some of this blue in here tap some of that in and then a little bit of yellow around the b too much heavy right there just take a little bit of it out catch my brush before it rolls off the page and hurts somebody or drops on my white shirt um so, uh, what's that old joke? Why are bees mean? Boom, shh, Ash knows the answer to this one. Why are bees mean? You'd be mean too. You'd be, why are bees mad? That was the joke. Why are bees mad? You'd be mad too if somebody took your honey and nectar. <laughs> Boom, shh, I'll be here all week. All right, so there's a little uh, hummingbird for you. I painted two roosters with a stick pin this morning. I painted some hummingbirds, and uh, I love that little bird. He's done. Why would I do anything else to him? Throw my uh, pallet in the floor. Make me a pallet on the floor. Last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go in here with my Lamy pen. Let's make sure it's writing well, and I'm just going to do a little bit of a black drift right in here in this, in this B. Give him a little more detail. And I'm going to have to use my gel pen. Watch this. Speaking of gel pens, if you don't have one of these, you might want to add it to your arsenal. It's made by, um, who makes this? Uniball. It's made by Uniball. You don't hear me talk about Uniball much. I don't use any Uniball pens except this one. It's a white gel pen. And I'm going to take it and just throw some white right in, in there like this on the hummingbird. And I think he needs just a touch of green in his head, just a little bit more, just to add some green right in there about the eye. Boy, he is turning out pretty doggone good just for a loose little bird that just kind of flew. No pun intended. All right, there you go. Boom. There you are. Hey, it's a little bit after 10. Uh, today is Monday. Lord willing, I'll see you Tuesday, maybe with another bird, but with a couple of ruse. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll zip through my other website, and then I'm going to send somebody an idea. Get your art on a wall, okay? So today, paint something small. You've already been doing it. Hey, pick up your cup, a toast to someone out there. Think of them. Send them a text. Say, hey, I hope you're well. Hope you had a blessed Easter. And... Uh, what are you doing creative today? There's a good question. And I love to answer the why question. So thank you. Why I paint roosters, why I paint, why I use the tools that I do, change all the time. Uh, why I add captions. I've had a lot of people say, you know, I wish you would take the captions off of your art. I'd like to hang it in my house. And I go, well, there's a lot of artists out there that don't put captions. And so I just kind of like to just spell it out. I'm just, I'm a writer and a poet as much as I am a painter. I'm a storyteller first. I use my stories for fodder to, or use my art for fodder to tell stories. So blessings to you all. Thanks for being a part of the show. And uh, where can I get the tray? The tray is a, a butcher's tray. It's made for, you can just look up butcher, butcher's tray for art palettes and you'll see uh, Amazon, I would say. Uh, I, I know Cheap Joe sells them, but I, I think you can find them at Amazon. If you need one tomorrow, um, captions all the way, Patricia Deaton says. Keep at it. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope my captions connect. But I hope 
Rude Littles Connects. Thanks for liking my show. Thanks for hitting that little heart. Thanks for sharing the show. And uh, and thanks for uh, uh, for talking about the friends that I talk about, Cheap Joe's and uh, Yasutoma. And today I'm drinking Thai food tea. Yes, Thai food. T y p h o o. I don't know what that word means, but it, maybe it's like y'all. Maybe it's about like my word. Take your tea and do something. But uh, it's Thai food tea. It's really close to builders but it's easy for me to get right here just down the street. And so I'm kind of getting uh, used to it. I like it. All right. All right. Blessings to you all. Thank you for liking the show. I'm so grateful to you for doing that. And um, thanks for sharing my show too. And invite a friend to, to view. I'll see you Tuesday morning and I'll come up with something creative between now and then to do with the other work that I have to do. Maybe I should just have you do my work for me. And, uh, Blessings to you all. I'm out of here. Just running and gunning like crazy. Let me see. Where's my harmonic? It's right here. Let me see if I can get my page over here and finish. Have to turn it around. I always have to put the bass on this end.